How's it going? So, I've got a lot of projects that involve CNC machines that I have planned coming up. And in a perfect world, I won't have to wire a new CNC controller for each of these machines. So, this is our quest towards that perfect world. Today, I wanna to build a CNC controller that is fairly simple, so it can be used for a wide variety of machines and also all in one package and not a huge pain to work with. And I'm gonna do this using Linux CNC. I know I just said not a huge pain to work with, but Linux CNC is great. But Linux CNC is very customizable and can definitely be tailored to any need if you don't mind sweating and cussing in front of a computer for 15 hours at a time to figure it out. But once you got it figured out, it's great. So <laughs> Linux CNC it is. Now, to make this thing, we're gonna use my old PC. I'm surprised that tempered glass didn't break. What do we have to work with here? Luckily, when I upgraded my PC, I upgraded literally everything except the graphics card. And we won't need a graphics card for this. Now, I am worried about the AMD, I think it's called hyper-threading. The many different functions for power saving that it's built into this chip. I feel like that might cause some issues with latency on Linux CNC, but that's something that we're just gonna have to figure out later. But what do we got? Ryzen 5, I think it's a 3600. We've got 32 gigs of RAM. Uh, I think they're DDR4. This ain't Linus Tech Tips. I don't actually know what components I have here. So, uh, I'm gonna start taking this thing apart and we'll figure out what we're gonna do with it. So I pulled the thing apart and we've got a 600 watt power supply. I'd like there to only be one plug for this and I need AC power for the 24 volt power supply I'm gonna be throwing in here. So, let's get this pesky little sticker out of here. Good to go. So to hijack the power, I'm literally just gonna solder these wires right to the plug, like so. And then we'll insulate those very professionally. Hot glue. Now, just gotta awkwardly fish these wires through this uh, not big enough hole. Come on, push! Like so. We got our 110 coming out of here. Now that will always be on, so we need to control that with a relay or something. But also, I want access to the DC voltages that this provides. And in the interest of being as non-invasive as possible, I cut these parts out on the laser. So you can see, this is labeled for all the outputs on this thing. Now let me just show you how it goes together. Here's our part. I've just taken the SATA cable and broken it out to these pegs. Now, this was cut on the laser in a way that I could clamshell these together and everything should be sealed in the acrylic. But the standoffs ended up a little bit wonky and I tried to force it and I started cracking this top piece. So, we got options here. Either force it and probably break a piece or fill it up with hot glue. I think you know what I'm gonna do. So, we gotta fit this pile of stuff into this portion of the case. Easy, right? All right, we're in there. Now, so that the power supply is only on when this is turned on, we're just gonna switch it with a relay. Got our relay, and it's just hooked up to the 12 volt posts on here. So once this power supply is turned on, It'll flick this relay, relay? It'll flick this relay and turn this power supply on. Now, the motherboard. After moving the standoffs to the wrong places three times, I think I finally landed on a spot that's good for this. This leaves just enough space for our parallel cords to fit inside the case. Some space up here for mounting components on the top, and we can still get to our SATA plugs. So, before actually installing this, I'm gonna do all the destructive stuff to the case that needs to be done. What you think about that, Linus? I think that's all the cutting into the case that I'm gonna have to do, so... It's time we install this guy. Let's see, looks like I got four screws that'll fit. <laughs> that'll do. The alternate title to this video is how not to build a PC. I cut this piece out on the plasma cutter. 
which we'll just install in here like so and we'll put all our CNC components on top of here but first I'm gonna plug everything into the motherboard that needs to be plugged into the motherboard all right I think that's everything that needs to plug into here now we can add our parallel ports into the PCIe slots like so no, as of right now, there's nothing to really hold these in place. But once we install our little platform, it sits right on top of them. So that should hold them in. We got to extend the HDMI port. Throw in a couple USBs for funsies. I think that's it on the motherboard. Now you might be wondering what these little holes I cut are for. I've 3D printed some parts. In this one, I put a HDMI coupler. I don't know what you would call it besides a coupler. And this one gets a USB hub. And on this USB hub, sticking a little Wi-Fi dongle in there. Hopefully that'll get it further towards the edge of the case and it'll work a little better. So I don't know how well it's going to work down there. These will just shove right in here. And I think they're going to be a real tight fit. So... Beautiful. Moving on. So I've drilled some holes in this plate where everything's going to go. These ones at the front need standoffs. And to hold the steppers in place, I'm just going to weld some number 8 machine screws in place. Beautiful! And now, to install all the components. Yeah, I'm missing a stepper drive. I thought I had one extra, but I forgot that I, um, ruined it. Figures. Let's throw this thing in the case. Oh man, guys. Before I installed that plate on top of the motherboard, I wanted to make sure everything was working okay, so I plugged this monitor in and booted it up. It seemed to boot up just fine. The problem, the monitor did not work. Cute monitor, huh? So I dug through my Amazon order history to figure out what kind of CPU this has. And it's a Ryzen 5 3600, which does not have integrated graphics. That sucks. Right now is a bad time to need a graphics card. Well, I'm gonna go into town and see what I can see. Maybe I'll get lucky. Oh my God, guys, can you believe it? Not only did I find a graphics card, I found one that's gonna fit underneath the plate. Lucky day, man. Look at this cute little thing. I mean, I guess it helps my case that there's no possible way you could mine crypto with this little dinky guy, but. I'm pleased, man. I'm gonna get this guy installed, make sure everything works, and then we can start wiring the CNC controller. So it turns out I did have to cut the plate a wee bit to fit the graphics card in, but I moved this guy over and put it on some comedy-sized standoffs just so that the parallel cord dodges this one. So I'm gonna start by wiring the stepper drives up, and then the rest is gonna be going to plug, so I'll have to wire it from the back panel. These little parallel port breakout boards are exceedingly simple to wire, but they do have horrible documentation. So, if you're watching this video as a tutorial, I'm sorry. I feel like I should apologize first. But I'll, I'll explain the wiring. So for parallel port breakout boards, I've got a Sane Smart 5-axis CNC breakout board, as well as a CNC 4PC breakout board, both of which are real cheap on Amazon. And for stepper drives, I have a DM542T stepper online stepper drive. Now to control the steppers, I'm hooking them to the same smart. So between the breakout board and the stepper drive, we're just working on this side of the stepper drive. Step goes to pulse minus, dir goes to dir minus, n goes to n minus. This making sense? <laughs> and then plus five volts goes to the positive side of all of those. Then on the other side of the stepper drive, you've got your ground and voltage in. I'm pretty sure these can take up to 42 volts. And you want something with a decent amount of amperage because this is the voltage that actually drives the stepper motor. And then you see you got your A+, plus, A-, minus, B+, plus, B-. Minus. Those all just go to the stepper motor in that configuration. Job done! So that is all the stepper drives, minus one, of course, wired up to the first parallel port. Now the rest of these are going to be hooked up to the panel that I'm going to install. And that panel is going to consist of a million aviation connectors. And the problem with these is they need to be soldered after they're already in place or before anything is hooked up to the wires on the other side of them. 
So, we got to make the panel first. Ta-da! Let me support this here. Beautiful. I cut this thing out on the plasma cutter, and then I just went buck wild with the Cricut. If you guys haven't considered getting a Cricut, do it. It's totally worth it. They're fairly cheap, and the quality of labeling you can make is pretty awesome. I mean, obviously this is very MS Paint, but I wanted to have it all color-coded and easy to read. So, props to Crafty Moms for making these things so accessible. Each plug is labeled with the pin and breakout board that it's tied to, and then down here we have a key for how the wiring of each plug is going to be. Yeah, I think this is going to work out pretty good. Now then, I have to solder all these plugs in. I'll, I'll be back once I've done that. Wish me luck. Good lord! All I've done is installed the plugs on here and I already feel the carpal tunnel creeping its ugly head in. I figure before I start soldering this and it becomes a, you know, giant flying spaghetti monster, I'm going to show you some of the anomalies. So these switches will connect to these jumpers. I don't know if you can see in here, but for some of the rows of inputs slash and or outputs, there are jumpers that will toggle pull up or pull down resistors. Down here, we can toggle the pull up, pull down. We can change these from inputs to outputs, and we can change the common from five volts to ground. So I figured I'll put them on switches and have them accessible from outside of the case. And then this section is just going to hook up to the power supply. So we got 12 volts, 5 volts, 3.3 volts, just like the other breakout board we made. Now to make these standoffs isolated from everything, I went to the hardware store and got all sorts of little nylon standoff thingies. These will be hooked to the wire and stuck on a number 8 screw, like so and then stuck through the hole. Then on the other side, I've pressed a T-nut onto a nylon spacer. And that just gets screwed in place. And to hold our little connectors in place, I've got a little rubber cap on a threaded piece of nylon, and that just screws all the way down on top of there. We got some nice little nipples for it. All right, enough stalling. I'm gonna start soldering these things. See you at the end of the week, huh? One eternity later. Well. That's that. I was doing so well at cable management. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> now we gotta jam this into the box. Well, if I didn't think three hours of soldering was bad enough, now I've got three hours of cable management ahead of me. See you guys eventually. Ta-da! Look at that, man. Honestly, I think it looks pretty nice. So this is all managed. All this stuff, good and installed. I've sort of done the cable management on the back, but I more took the route of um, zip tie it together and stuff it in there. Hey, all that's left now to do is get the cases put on, install Linux CNC, and uh, give it a test. Somehow give it a test. Would you look at that? I don't know how I managed to jam a PC and a CNC controller into one PC case, but I'm pretty happy with it, man. Now the tempered glass will inevitably break, but you know, it's cool for now. I'll replace it with acrylic when it breaks. You may be asking, what, why didn't you put RGBs on there? I'm not that tacky, guys, come on. Now as for the wiring of this thing, it's all very simple because I want to leave this open-ended. I already went over the steppers. As for everything else, I literally just took the inputs and outputs on each of the breakout boards and brought them up to the front panel. This is all outlined down here on my handy dandy color coded guide because I never remember how I wired things. So here I don't have to. Yeah, pretty simple. I wanted to keep it simple. That way it's very customizable. This is basically just bare bones CNC setup. If I want to have like a relay module that doesn't actually come into the case or whatever, I'm just going to have to create an external module that I can plug into these. But yeah. Ain't nothing to do but put Linux CNC on here and give it a test. So I'm running a latency test, and honestly it looks better than I thought it would. We've got, what, 16,000 nanoseconds of max jitter, which is honestly better than my other two CNC machines, so I don't even think I'm going to mess around in BIOS to fix that. Sorry, it's a real cluttered mess over here. 
I used aviation connectors on the plasma cutter when I built it, so I've gone ahead and plugged the X and Y motor ones into our new setup. Hopefully I wired these similarly to this. I don't see why I wouldn't, but you know, we'll see. Testing time. So I've set up a little config here. We're moving. Can you, can you even see it? What if I go like that? You can see it now, huh? Look at that. This obviously isn't tuned at all, but you know, this is just me testing that the machine's working. And it is. This thing's definitely gonna come in handy. I may end up mounting it somewhere and call it my shop computer. I partitioned the drive to be running Linux CNC and Windows, so I could try and run Mach if I want to. I'm not too familiar with Mach, and I really like Linux CNC, but... We got options, man. I'm probably going to mess around with the power saving options on this thing, see if I can get that base period jitter down, because the hardware on this machine is way overkill, and I want to harness the power of that. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how this thing turned out. And over on Patreon, I'm going to make one of my uh, first modules for this, if you will. Just going to make a little Wiimote nunchuck jog pendant, like I had on the laser. Because that was pretty sweet, man. <laughs> so yeah, if you'd like to see that, go support me on Patreon. Link's in the doobly-doo. Either way, that's what I got for you this week. And thanks for sticking around for the ride. Remember to leave a good old dinger. Thank you for watching.